It's a beloved escape from the bustle of New York City, suspended over the streets below. Opened in 2009, the High Line turned abandoned railroad tracks into an elevated park, taking a whole new spin on public spaces. Jill Schlesinger is here with details on its latest evolution. The High Line has been hugely popular since the day it opened, a 1.5 mile bucolic footpath on the west side of urban Manhattan now a newly opened connecting bridge to the High Line and the history to our modern system of transportation. It's open, and I got a first look. A moment of celebration in New York City this week, one of revitalization at the brand new High Line Moynihan Connector, an unveiling that Governor Kathy Hochul says was much needed. After the pandemic, we said we want people to be able to come here, celebrate the resilience of New York, and this is a perfect example of our indomitable spirit that has always characterized New York City and our state. Comprised of two bridges totaling 600 feet, the connector links Pennsylvania Station's Moynihan train hall to the High Line. Alan Van Capel is the executive director of the nonprofit Friends of the High Line. This is the Timber Bridge. It's over 2,700 pieces of yellow Alaskan cedar that was harvested in Oregon, sent up to Vancouver, where it was assembled. A 90-year evolution from an elevated train line used to transport millions of tons of meat, dairy, and produce to an urban oasis conceived by community members Joshua David and Robert Hammond in 1999. Fast forward to 2021, and the newly renovated Moynihan Train Hall sparked another dream to seamlessly connect millions of rail passengers to the High Line. An unlikely trio banded together to make that happen. The state, the community, and real estate developer Brookfield Properties. It's incredibly important to create these types of environments that people want to come to and want to stay at, linger at. Callie Haynes is Brookfield's executive vice president. There is that commercial aspect of it, of creating areas and experiences in the city that give it a new sense of life. But that doesn't come cheap. What did each part of this triumvirate have to pony up to make it happen? So Brookfield contributed $20 million to the effort. The state of New York, through the Empire State Development Corporation, contributed $20 million to the effort. And Friends of the High Line raised $10 million privately through philanthropy to help make this happen. They hope this expensive new access point will help revive the pandemic-depleted area. It connects a diversity of neighborhoods that then will only help with that flow of pedestrians, of, of tourists, of community members, will only help build the retail around it and therefore help build up the neighborhoods themselves. What do you see when you look at this bridge? What I see is a beautiful truss structure. I was a structural engineer in college, so I, I find it, like Alan said, gorgeous. It's a thing of beauty, but it also feels like a gateway. A gateway to greenery on the Woodland Bridge. I think when people are on this bridge, their shoulders are going to start to come down a little bit. They're going to find themselves more peaceful. They're going to see amazing world-class public art. And they're going to be reminded about why New York is one of the greatest cities in the world. Take a deep breath. The connector is also about spanning divides. We live in a place where there are not a lot of opportunities for people of well-to-do backgrounds, middle-income backgrounds, and low-income backgrounds to share and hold space together, to be inspired together, to imagine and dream big together. And this is a place where that can happen. So cool, Jill. Right? Yeah. What is it, yellow Alaskan cedar? Yeah, I mean, and it's like just amazing the way they brought it all together. Yeah. I loved this idea that three different parties came together. You think about the community, private money raised, right? Right. Private through the Brookfield properties, the developer, and the mm -hmm. state of New York. It is one of these fabulous public-private partnerships that really worked. And by the way, this took 18 months from beginning of it construction. Seems like it seems fast. Yeah. Really yeah. fast. Yeah. So it's beautiful. And uh, my friend Alan Van Capel is the one who uh, is the new executive director. And I thank him for giving us access. Oh, great. We've all got to go after the show. Let's go down there. <laughs>